G'day everyone and welcome to the second of the Rural Flying Dock presentations covering common general practice problems and today we'll be talking about erectile dysfunction. Now erectile dysfunction can be a bit of a, a tricky topic for some and, and kind of embarrassing so i uh, probably describe this in my best posh British accent. So erectile dysfunction is the inability to obtain or maintain sufficient rigidity of the penis to allow satisfactory sexual performance. And erectile dysfunction itself increases, um, its incidence increases with age, with a recent Australian study finding that one in five men over the age of 40 suffered, and up to 60% over the age of 70 um, had erectile dysfunction. Unfortunately, many men are too embarrassed to seek help, and you need to be opportunistic in asking about it when, when men present to your clinic. Usually there will be a different complaint that they come with and as they walk out the door there might be some mention. So you've got to be on the ball, so to speak. History wise, if you do identify that erectile dysfunction is a problem for the man, you need to clarify what they actually mean by erectile dysfunction. Uh, some will describe this as being a low libido or premature or retrograde ejaculation, these being different problems. It's important to identify other risk factors in the man's health that may be contributing and we'll go into those soon. And then if there is erectile dysfunction, differentiating between the organic and psychogenic uh, causes and risk factors. So the organic causes. Cardiovascular disease is a big, big part of it. So those with ischemic heart disease have a four times greater risk of having erectile dysfunction, similarly with peripheral vas vascular disease and also high blood pressure. It's also a really, really good predictor of multi-vessel cardiovascular disease, especially um, silent heart attacks. So anyone who presents, you find that has erectile dysfunction, you gotta be pretty hot on them about their cardiovascular health as well. Those with diabetes are at three times risk of having uh, erectile dysfunction and up to 35% um, suffer with it. There are neurological causes, so those that have had surgery on their pelvic or spinal areas or indeed an injury um, can suffer and multiple sclerosis also. There are a few medications that are implicated and we'll mention those later. So smoking doubles the risk of erectile dysfunction and alcohol and illicit drugs can as well. So it's a nice leverage point for men who come in with these problems and you can say well if you cut down on your smoking or alcohol intake, then that can actually improve your disease. So other organic causes that can be implicated are Peyronie's disease, which has a great Latin term of induratio penis plastica, um, essentially a connective tissue disease, hypothyroidism, testosterone deficiency, and hyperprolactinemia. In the latter, you're looking for gynecomastia, changes in vision, um, and galactorrhea. Psychogenic causes aren't as common as organic causes, so looking at about 20% of cases, but similarly important to explore the psychological state of the man in front of you, and some of the uh, issues are listed there. These can respond well to psychotherapy and sexual counselling. So as I mentioned earlier, it's a good idea to work out early on if you're dealing with a psychogenic or organic cause of erectile dysfunction. So those with an organic cause will have a gradual uh, and consistent loss of erection, whereas those with psychogenic will be the opposite. Again, psychogenic causes will maintain a morning erection, whereas the organic will not. There's usually a low or absent libido in psychogenic origin where that's not lost in the organic. And the age can also be a discriminator, but that's not as uh, sensitive as you can imagine. So some of the medications that are implicated include antihypertensives, especially your thiazide diuretics and beta blockers, antidepressant medication, including SSRIs, um, benzodiazepines, antiandrogens, and some histamine blockers. Your examination should include a cardiovascular and vascular exam, especially looking at your lower limb pulses. A rectal exam may be warranted if there's issues of prostate involvement. And a cramasteric or bulbo cavernosis reflexes, I wouldn't do every time, only perhaps if you're suspecting some spinal injury. So your cramasteric reflex, 
identifying an L1 or L2 defect and the bulbo cavernosus reflex looking at S2 to S4. Um, if you want to have some fun you should Google the bulbo, bulbo cavernosus reflex and you might see why it's not done every time. Investigation wise, blood tests are your mainstay, so you're looking at free testosterone, um, thyroid levels, prolactin, luteinizing hormone, fasting cholesterol and glucose for your general cardiovascular screening, and also liver and kidney function. Management wise, if you do actually manage to find an endocrine or hormonal disorder at the bottom of the erectile dysfunction, then it's important to treat that first. If not, then you can fall back to your Viagra or Cialis treatment which have been shown to be quite effective, although not for neurological causes. With these treatments, you still need sexual stimulation and they just work at enhancing the erectile capability that's already there. And for patients suffering with angina or recent stroke or heart attack, it's contraindicated and there should be no nitrate use within 24 hours. Common side effect between both are a headache. And there are some other oral medications that aren't as well known or used. Continue on the management, there's intrapenile injections with alprostadil being the main one, only uh, allowed to have that three times a week. Obviously that's not as uh, ideal as the oral medication for some men. And the alprostadil is also available as a urethral pellet. Going right down the track there is surgical options including penile prosthesis, prosthesis um, one being a malleable sort, another an inflatable type. Sticking with the inflatable side of management, uh, vacuum pumps have been shown to have some effectiveness uh, with Austin Powers uh, demonstrating his Swedish model there. Erectile dysfunction is a common problem, so it's always important to ask about it and to clarify what the patient means by their erectile dysfunction. Then differentiate between the organic and psychogenic causes because that really directs the treatment. Review their current medications and make sure there's not something there that might be causing the problem. Treat any underlying conditions that you find on blood tests and then start with simple non-invasive treatments such as your Viagra or Cialis. These are some references that I used for the presentation today and hope you enjoyed the talk and that you might rise to the occasion and ask any of your men who fall into that age bracket um, about their, their sexual function. Thanks for watching today and any questions hit me up on Twitter there at Rural Flying Doc and we'll see you next time.